Hey guys, this is Tomek from storagefreak.net. In this video, I want to continue working with firewall rules. If you haven't seen the first video, look for the introduction to firewall rules on my channel. Today I will give you an example how you could create a VM instance hosting web server, which I'm doing right now in the background, and later on block all protocols ports besides TCP port 80 for web server. Later on, I will build kind of a bastion host that would be my stepping stone to access my web server from the management point of view. I will add a simple setup script to install Apache 2 and leave the default settings as is. And let me go ahead and create the server. Um, during the creation, let me modify a little bit the view of this table. What we are interested in are the network tags. As you can see, HTTP server is added because we selected allow HTTP traffic. All right, now it should be more clear to view the table. Okay, it seems the web server is already created. However, let's give it a little bit more time to finish the startup script. In the background, I will open the firewall rules in the new tab because I will be jumping between those two views quite often. As you can see, HTTP server tag is already attached to the VM and this tag corresponds with a default allow HTTP, which opens TCP on port 80. But also I've got a couple of rules that apply to all, for example, TCP on 22 and ICMP. So let's verify that. Let's check if the web server is already responding to the HTTP request. And it is. We see our Apache 2 default page. Perfect. But also by default, all your VMs are opened on port 22 for TCP, which is for SSH. And let's check that. Let's put the external IP address to party, accepting the fingerprint, and we see our login message. Now, of course, the machine is also secured with, with the credentials, but it still might be potential security breach since the host is responding to port 22. So let's change that. A low HTTP rule is on priority 1000. So I'll create a rule block all ingress traffic. Let's call it block all ingress and set the priority to 1001, which is just a little bit lower than our port 80. That's what I wanted to achieve. So ingress deny and the target, uh, let's call it deny or block ingress. And for the IP ranges, let's select all the internet. So 0.0.0.0 slash .0, 0. That's the CIDR notification for all IP4 addresses and deny all protocols and ports. Now, once the rule is created, pay attention to the priority column. The lower the number, the higher the priority. So 1000 is higher, so more important than 1001. All right, so let's assign this target uh, tag to our machine. Let me edit the web server, going for the instance details and clicking the edit button. Um, let me scroll down to look for the network tags and add the block ingress tag to correspond with the rule we just created and quickly saving the changes and usually it will take 5 to 15 maybe 20 seconds once the changes are saved before the rules are actually applied so let me open the command line windows command line and execute ping commands i think we should be able to catch few pings before the rule will apply uh, I will use minus T to, for the constant ping and the machine is still responding but just after a couple of seconds it stopped. So actually our, our rule is now applied and the machine is blocked completely besides port 80 which is for HTTP because this rule has higher priority. I will also test the PADI connectivity on port 22 since I did it on the beginning and after just a couple of seconds, the connection should time out because now it's blocked. And after a second, we see our connection timeout message. So perfect, we just secured access to our web server. But there is one problem, to be honest. Uh, we did a little bit too good job because we cannot reach the management of the machine in any way. When I'm trying to connect directly via a SSH connect button on GCP, this connection will also time out. 
And that's because we specifically said that all the ports are blocked besides port 80 for that particular host. So there are <laughs> pretty much no exceptions right now. And as you can see on the screen, the connection failed because the VM is unreachable on port 22. Okay, so let's change that. I will create another VM, uh, we call it Bastion Host, and this VM will be kind of my stepping stone, the only point that has access to my secured web server. So let's do one change. Let me go to the management security networking section and let me assign a network tag to it. I will call it Bastion Host. This tag doesn't exist yet in the firewall rules, so it will actually do nothing at this stage. But later on, I will just create a new rule that will give me an access to the web server. So we can use this topology to create a single point of entry to your secured environment, a bastion host, that can have some extra security policies or even be shut down anytime you don't need to access your management environment. Now let me go ahead and create a rule that will give an SSH access to my web server or to be more precise to all hosts that have block ingress rule applied. That's the beauty of firewall rules. You can specify the rules once and later on apply to many hosts by simply adding or removing the network tags. This rule have to have higher priority than my block ingress, so let's say 999. Uh, it's for ingress traffic and the target tags. Instead of creating a, another tag, let's apply it to all hosts that have block ingress tag uh, added. So target tag will be also block ingress. And the source filter, it will not be IP range, it'll be source tag. And the tag is bastion host. So in the future, if I change the IP address of the bastion host or create a new bastion host, it, all I have to do is to remember to add the tag. Now I can allow all protocols and ports, which would be probably okay, but it's better to give only what you have to give. So I will just uh, allow port 22 on TCP for the SSH and ICMP for ping. Let's create the rule. Now pay attention again on the priorities right now. Remember the higher priority, so lower number, is more important. That's why a low bastion will be more important that, than the block or ingress. And our configuration is completed. The target tag block ingress will add two rules. One will block everyone and another one will allow uh, SSH and ICMP for the bastion host. So what we can do right now is to connect to the bastion host and, and actually verify that. One thing to remember is that our bastion host will do have access to the web server via internal IP addresses. That's because we used uh, network tags as a source filter. Anyways, let me establish the connection to the bastion host and let's, let's try to ping the web server. Actually, the DNS, internal DNS name should be in place and it is. The ping is, is responding. As you can see, the IP address uh, with the dot 27 at the end is the IP address, internal IP address of our web server. So let's try to connect to it via SSH. The SSH keys should be already uh, exchanged, so that should be possible. Let me accept the fingerprint and I'm connected to the web server. You can see the changes in the uh, host name. Uh, so let me edit the index HTML page. Uh, let's remove everything and just put some simple message. Uh, so removing everything and putting h1 message edited from the bastion host um, Yep, pretty much it. Let me save the results and disconnect from this host now Let's verify if we can actually access web web server and if we see the changes So we can because port IT is open for everyone so everyone could access it, but we still cannot ping it from the world because that's blocked. To give you the proof, let me do it from the Windows command line, obviously without the HTTP prefix. Uh, pinging the IP address and as expected, that will fail because this host is now blocked for everyone besides port 80 and extra access from our bastion host. So the beauty of this configuration is right now, if we create new instances and just assign the uh, tag, network tag block ingress, by default everything will be blocked besides the bastion host. 
I will clean up the configuration now, but, but there is one valuable lesson at the end. I can remove my firewall rules, even though there are still VMs that have network tags assigned. Always make sure you understand the consequences when you remove or change your firewall rules, just to be sure you will not allow more traffic than you intended by accident. Anyways, uh, I hope you learned something today, thanks for watching and subscribe to the channel to see more GCP tutorials and see you in the next video.